what is up my people my name is Anthony welcome back to September today we're gonna to be taking a look at a super simple chrome type setup that you can get set up for yourself in C4D and Octane really easy and um, it's also procedural so you can plug in topography um, just regular text or logos into this and it should um, theoretically work pretty pretty well um, just need to make sure you set some right stuff up and you can also tweak um, completely how this looks and I'll show you how you can get some color work going on uh, and really customize the eventual look of this chrome type but it's eventually going to turn out to look something a little like this um, main thing to bear in mind it's obviously like a metallic material you're using the HDRI to sort of manipulate how this looks um, and a lot of it is sort of like 50-50 your HDRI to what your actual model is um, so without any further ado I'm just going to really delete this really quickly delete this so I don't have to redo it all um, and we can take a little look uh, into the actual setup here. So I'm going to delete the skies as well. So I'm just left with the camera here. Um, and we're going to start from step one, which is grabbing yourself your text. So if we get here, this is a totally classic Mo text, nothing special about it. Um, and this is where obviously you can input whatever text you want. So I've got a font in mind that I kind of want to try. Um, we're just going to get the word Chrome here. Um, and I believe it is... Um, a little more of a creative one. This is something that I found. It's called Odysseus, if anyone's wondering. Um, so good chrome type, I tend to find, especially if we're in Octane, obviously we've got a lot of freedom here to sort of render out how we want to. But it tends to be a good balance between the font that you have or logo, because obviously you want that to look good. Um, and then the HDRI and obviously the material and sort of like framing and stuff. Um, but it tends to be your font and your HDRI are a massive part to play. Um, in, in, the, in what your render actually looks like, right? Because that's where you can sort of like pick up little details. Um, but what we've got here is literally just the text by itself. So what we want to think about when creating these kind of chrome types is that we want to avoid, we, we avoid these in 3D anyway, but you really want to avoid these edges. These sharp edges here are not something that we want. So for those that have watched any of my older videos, we've got a pretty cool technique that we can do just to get rid of them really quick. Um, but for now, let's just head into our camera and just center this really easily, just like that. Um, and what we can do is, so we don't need to do anything. We can actually leave this text the way it is, so it remains editable. We can hop in here, and if you're running R26, you can grab yourself a remesh tool, plug that in, uh, and we can see that's going to go about remeshing our text a little bit. Now, we're getting a little bit of a glitch on the H here, so if we just go here and set that to polygon count, that should fix that up a little bit, and now we can pick the polygons that we kind of want. So if you go down to about 500, or rather we're getting... We're getting some glitches on that letter there. So let's see if we can increase that maybe a little bit. Uh, 1000, potentially. You wanna make sure you're in Z remesher. Uh, let's just change this text real quick to something else. So we've got Chrome. Uh, we'll go for something like this. That was a unique exception. I think it might be something with a font, but nine times out of 10, if you're using remesher, it will work with your thing, um, with your text. As you can kind of see here, or logo, it will work fine. Um, so we're gonna try the word metal here. So what we can do now is we want to go about rounding off the sort of corners that we see. Uh, and the best way of doing that is now that we've got this topology, we can head into our camera uh, and literally grab ourselves a subdivision surface and put that in. And this is kind of the stack that you want. Um, if we take a little look in here, we've got quite dense geometry, but you can see those corners, and round, corners rounded off. Um, and that's what's going to pick up the light from the HDRI to make this really pop, right? So if we head back into our Octane camera real quick and just make the HDRI dark. So if we just grab two, and we'll make one, two, make sure we're setting one of them to visible environment. We can go in here, and this is where we have complete freedom with the HDRIs to make this look how we want it to look. Um, if we go to Grayscale Gorilla, this is a great library of HDRIs that I've got here. Um, but just for now, I'm gonna grab something super basic that you can find online just to prove that you can really achieve the look with anything. So if we just grab a random HDRI, drag image we're saying it's aces i've got a little bit of post processing on here which we don't need obviously we've got white material on this right now so bear in mind that's why that looks that way um this is the one i used before just to prove there's nothing to it i'm going to create a metallic material um, and drag that straight on our subdivision surface and you can see that's now reflecting our hdri um, if we grab our camera and just maybe zoom it in a little bit so we can get the full resolution and we go into our hdri now you can see that by using rotate x we start to manipulate how this looks. So we have a few choices here to sort of like tweak this to our liking. Honestly, um, this is a pretty good Chrome type look. This is this is something that I'd pre be pretty happy with. But say you're in a position where your text is a little thicker. So the good thing about this, like I said, it's pretty much procedural, right? So you can increase the depth of this. It's going to remesh it. It's going to go a little funky there, but then we can do that. So you can see that as we increase the thickness, it draws out the text a little more. Um, and it gives it a little more depth if that's what you're after. 
at this point because we've increased the depth we can also go to the remesh and turn down the polygon count so if we wanted it to be more rounded and have less geometry for the subdivision to work with we could turn that down ever so slightly and if we go really down you can see that's really starting to mellow out a little bit um, it's starting to lack a little bit of detail so i'd say between 250 500 thousand is kind of where you want to be um, but it is a case by case basis as you saw the last one there was a bit of a glitch so if we sort of tweak this up to whatever we're happy with um, you can kind of see the results that you get but i tend to prefer sort of thinner looks um, because it kind of warps warps the light a little nicer so something something maybe around 20 something like that seems to look 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 pretty good so um keep saving it if you wanted to if you wanted to sort of manipulate this even more um, obviously the main thing that you're going to do at this point is the material is pretty much completely reflective so what you want to do is sort of work with the hdri so if you have HDRIs in mind, or if you want to go back, I actually made a video on how to create your own HDRIs out of Photoshop, literally just by moving colors all over the place. Um, that's a pretty cool way of doing things. Um, I tend to gravitate towards this HDRI library that I've got. There's this Pro Studios Metal 2 uh, Grayscale Gorilla library, which has loads of sort of warped EXRs. This one in particular is one that I had on before because it has some nice little colors, just some like light blues and oranges, right? Um, and those are the kind of details which really start to pop out on your um, chrome types and almost make it look like a title sequence, right? Um, so cool stuff to bear in mind. If you want to turn up the power, you can do that. Um, we don't really have any reason we can't do that. So get this, let get a little bit of warmth in it. And all at the same time, you're catching some really nice shadows around the edges. Um, as you can kind of see, I had the uh, post processing on my camera before which had really slight glow but I had the cutoff turned up to about one um, so that it wasn't everywhere it was just on the super white bits and it created a really cool look I'm just going to show you one last thing because this is incredibly easy um, save this off uh, one thing you can do is you can actually edit your HDRIs from Octane. So say you're looking at this and you're like, uh, I'm not sure about the orange. You kind of want this to be a little more bluey um, and you have Photoshop installed you actually have the ability to click edit here uh, and what you can do is click OK, get in here, and it's going to open up that EXR in Photoshop. So this is what I meant. If you have a canvas, just take a look at the resolution down here. If you create that and just make this sort of shape for yourself, um, or I mean, you know, blurring, Gaussian blur, just like brushing it about, um, you can achieve this pretty easily. But my initial point was to change the hue of this. So if you wanted to do that, you can literally go in here, head to image, adjustments, hue and saturation. You'd have to save it as a copy. But say you wanted more of like, yeah, blue, blue and green maybe. You could also use curves. You can get some more green highlights there. Um, but let, let's let's go for let's go for blue. Uh, you can hit OK. Go to File, Export, or rather Save As. You want to make sure you're saving it as an EXR. Um, I tend to get lost in this folder, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it in September. Save it just there. And make sure you just hit OK. And then if you go back into Octane here and find this bit here you can go back to wherever you saved your exr and you can see the blue has the orange has changed to blue and you're getting a pretty cool result here so you just want to make sure sometimes that didn't load in for me just then so you kind of want to redo it every now and then but ideally you can get a result like this um, and you can retweak that there is an alternative way of doing it where you can use some nodes in the editor here um, but you need to start rebaking it and EXR sort of get a little bit weird with it. So I found that's Photoshop sort of the best method. Um, but in general, this is how you create some super easy chrome, uh, chrome types. If you wanted to, you could obviously start merging more HDRIs and sort of get quite complex with it. But generally, um, I think this is pretty, I've shown you pretty much all you need to sort of create the kind of look that you want. Um, and you can render this out and sort of use it in whatever you like. But I think it's pretty cool for title sequences personally. Um, I think it has its ways and without waffling anymore uh, i will leave you with that so thank you everybody for watching again another one a shorter video today but i hope you guys appreciate it and i'll see you very soon with some more content so thank you everyone for watching